Converting light fixtures to LED. Some are a lot simpler than others. This one I just, I can't screw just a bulb into. It actually uses the round ones. So let's do it. These can be as much as 200 bucks or so. This one I picked up for a whopping $5, but didn't come with a light and chances are the, the bulb was bad. Either that or else the, uh, the ballast, because this runs a fluorescent too, or a fluorescent uh, circle line bulb, it is what they're called. But those can go bad as well. And I don't know if the circle line is bad or not, but I'm gonna convert this to LED um, rather cheaply. So I have a bunch of this stuff. Um, it's kind of like rope light, but it's not. It's called a 3528 um, LED strip light, something to that effect. And I bought this a few years ago off Amazon to actually, for under cabinet lighting when I redo my kitchen. And I was gonna run a couple strands of this under the cabinets, but just one strand of this was amazing. It actually adds plenty of light under the counters. But I've also wanted to use it for other things because it runs off just regular 12 volts. So you could even mount this you know, so skinny, you can mount this under the dash in your car, because that's all 12 volts, or anywhere else you can imagine. Um, it's called 3528 because that's what LEDs it uses, which is 3.5 millimeters by 2.8 millimeters. They also have um, a couple different ones, but they have like uh, 5050, which is 5 millimeters by 5 millimeter LEDs, and that's a lot more expensive, but it, it'll put off more light than this. Uh, this stuff, I think I, I bought both rolls for around 15 bucks or something. And each roll is about five meters or about 15 feet long, which is quite a bit. Um, but I think I can, I, I looked on Amazon just a, a few days ago and I think you can buy this now for around, around 10 bucks and you can even get a little transformer for it. But I just happen to have two rolls and a, a spare transformer that runs 12 volts. So I'm gonna use this stuff right here to actually um, convert this fixture into LED. And all you need to do, I mean, this is just a standard transformer, wall wart, whatever you want to call it, is it just needs to be 12 volts. That's 12 volts, and it just has one of these little fittings right here. And the insides, I've never seen one that wasn't positive, and the outside's negative. And that will just, we just got to fix it to it, and it lights up. And this, the LED stuff is pretty neat because it comes in a lot of different colors, um, a ton of different colors, pretty much any color you can think of. Or you can even buy the LED strips that will actually color change. Usually they're about three times the price, but you can actually have remote controls and you can change you know, whether you want green, blue, red, or anywhere in between. But I'm going to simply, this already has wiring and stuff in here, and I'm going to use some of the existing wire so I don't have to run on my own. Um, but I'm essentially just going to lay this in here and do several wraps of it, wire it all up. Um, the idea is I want to use the original on off switch right here. So we'll use that, but other than that, everything else gets gutted as far as the, the big old bulky transformer and stuff in here. That'll all go to the wayside. I have no idea if it works. It might, might not. There's even a plug back here that I'll probably still leave on and utilize. This light fixture just has a standard plug on it. But all we need to do is have power come up to here. And then this will power. And I can just cut this off and solder the wires directly to this strip lighting. And we just hook that through the light switch. But we just this will power LED. And this just needs power. And the nice thing about this LED strip lighting is you can cut it anywhere. You got all these little um, spots in here. I can cut it here, 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 anywhere in between. So even though they, they give you wires on the very end, I'll just cut off chunks and just solder. They give you little terminals on there. You can just solder your own um, wherever you want, anywhere on the unit. We had the old trans, well, the old uh, fluorescent connector here. I just snipped that out because I don't need that at all. But just looking through here, here's my switch. Just um, the way they had it running is they had power coming up here and then feeding back down all the way back down to the loop. So I figured out that, you know, the white wire just comes straight through from the white wire in your wall. And the, uh, the black wire right here came through and it feeds actually to this white wire as well. White and white, whatever. But I don't need these other ones, so we'll just unsolder them, which is nice. They're just soldered on. And a shameless promotion for Isotip. They sent me this uh, cordless soldering iron, and this is amazing. 
This is actually really cool. They said, hey, can we send you one? I'm like, yes, you can send me one. You can send me 20. I don't care. But I have used, um, let's say, cordless soldering irons before in the sense that of the, like the butane ones. And I hate them because they take forever to heat up. Um, and then they are always running out of butane and then they're blazing hot forever. But this one... So I am always just using corded ones, and I had the, years ago I had one called like the, the Cold Heat. They sold that, there was a lot of infomercials and stuff for it, and that thing was just horrible. That just ran off a couple, you know, double A's or something, uh, worthless. But this thing just runs off, it has two uh, NICAD uh, sub-C cells in there, I actually took it apart already. And you just set it on a charger stand, it just sits there and charges forever, has a little light, I mean it's as basic and as simple as they get and it just works amazing. It's my my new second favorite one besides my plug-in one. A couple light taps with a hammer and this thing just came right apart and if you're going to do this you don't need to do this. I mean you're converting a lamp I mean you can just plug this into the wall down below and then just run this wire up and use these wires to power the LED. I just try to make it seamless but um, just comes apart and I'm left with this. There's my two terminals that will plug into the wall and I'll just cut those right off and I will just solder more than likely just directly where they soldered. So I'll just solder terminal here, one here, one there. So bye bye plug terminals. Those are gone. Just snipped them right off. Insert this back into the housing and then in the housing where the plugs used to be coming out right there I just drilled two holes on the side and stuck my wires through. And now, we'll just take this and just solder the wires directly on to the terminals that I want them to be. Works out like I hope. All this will be back together. And this, who's this? Hong Quang. And now this is a modified Hong Quang. Cut the wire off of my transformer. And one has a white stripe on it one's just pure black and make sure you test because LEDs are um, polarity sensitive so the white just happens to be the positive and the black just happens to be the black so good enough good to know so we'll just tin these wires with a big old glob of solder not nah, huge so they're all soldered up make sure that's not sharp there we go and we'll just throw Heating tubing over it. Now it's time for the test. I'll plug it in. Before we get everything stuck in there, we'll push a little switch on the opposite side right here. And it lights up. Off, on, off, on. Great. Unplug it. And now we can run it. Now, the issue is, is this LED... Um, Stuff. I mean, LEDs are directional, so they only like to shine in one direction. They're horrible at lighting up a room or something else to that effect, unless they're in a, a can light or something else like that. But what I'm going to do is, because I can't lay them on the bottom to point them down, is we're just going to run them around the sides in here. And these uh, 3528 LEDs are roughly, um, each segment of three is roughly about 20 lumens. So. Each revolution is going to give me around 250 uh, lumens. So if I do four revolutions, it's about 1,000 lumens, which is pretty equivalent. I think the uh, fluorescent tube in here was right around 1,100, maybe 1,200 lumens. So we'll be pretty close to that. So I'll now just run them around and stick them on the inside. They come with some nice 3M adhesive um, on the back. So they'll stick pretty good, but I'll still use... If you really want this stuff to stick, um, hot glue. So I'll use a little hot glue after I pre-stick them in areas, and the hot glue will just reassure that they never go anywhere. And we used roughly half the roll. So that's actually around seven feet or two and a half meters or so. You've got to make sure your hot glue gun's pink because those are the best colors. All the other ones don't work as well. Got the LEDs all wrapped up in there. Um, couldn't, wouldn't be able to tell it's not really factory without really looking at it. The hot glue holds everything. 
It's plugged in, so let's see. Yep, on, off. Amazing. Just like when it was new, except for now it runs off LEDs instead of fluorescent. But I can magnify stuff now. Woo, check that out. But thanks for watching, guys. If you like this sort of thing, don't forget to subscribe and comment and rate and share it on Facebook because everybody wants to convert all their lights to LEDs these days. I think the total cost for me was right around five bucks. Yeah, probably in the neighborhood of five bucks because I had the transformer for free. But even if I had the transformer, I could have bought the transformer and enough light to do two of these, you know, because I only used half for right under ten bucks off Amazon. So still right around five bucks to convert this light and I'll probably never ever have to change anything or touch anything again unless the transformer goes out. But awesome. See you guys soon. Bye. Right, dog? You see that? Is that exciting? She thinks it's exciting.